I'm going to look at the CAT timeline and what should be the preparation plan for this exam, especially for uh, college students who are in their pre-final year, they're planning to have a go at this exam in their final year, what should their plan be? Uh, for the guys who have already taken CAT before or are doing a crash course version, we'll have a slightly different version for that. Fine. Now, let's start off with what this, when you should ideally think about starting preparation. This is the year before CAT. This is when your pre-final year semester begins. You should think about starting in the pre-final year sometime around October so that you have a timeline of about a year to plan for this exam. And you don't require an entire year of intense preparation but having a full year helps essentially because you might lose some time to semester exams and placements and all of that. So, so to have that buffer it helps you start early. Okay. Usually October is a good time to start preparation. We, we start we at 2 IM start a batch every month starting October onwards. Okay. Now how do we plan our preparation? What should be the key idea here? From October to June, this period, you should, I would call it as phase one and phase two of preparation. That is a core preparation. This is the most important component. This is a time where you learn every bit. You learn every single component, every simple topic in math, data interpretation, logical reasoning, verbal reasoning, reading comprehension, all of that. And practice intensely. And one part of it is to learn. One part of it is to practice. And both are important. One without the other is useless for this exam because it's not just your ideas and what you know but how intense and how on top of your game you can be and so october to june should be more or less dedicated to this what is the timeline how much time are we looking to prepare to learn the basic ideas you should be looking at 150 hours to practice you should be looking at another 150 hours so this is the time you're looking to prepare this is not extraordinarily high if you have an eight month window you're preparing for 300 hours you're preparing for give or take 40 hours per month. So it's eight to 10 hours per week. You go to a course where you sit for four to five hours. Outside of that, you're spending four to five hours. This is not very difficult. I told, let me put it very mildly. This is just not very difficult. And so this is a very, it, the, the timeline, time required to crack this exam, it's not, it's not, you have to prepare for 40 hours a week for 100 weeks. It's not like that. It's a very manageable exam. This is not half as tough as, Writing a, writing a CA exam or the JE exam. So it's a fairly doable exam. Okay. Now what do we do beyond this? In the, in the June, July, June to November period, usually from this year onward, they've told us that the exam is likely to be in November. So from June to November, what we do? Focus more on practice exams and reviewing. And so you'll have a lot of times to recap, revise, and focus on mock cats and, and, and taking exams that are as close to CAT as possible. A great many students start at in June for preparation. So if you're starting now, then you've got to do everything in five months. So beyond taking mock CATs and practice exams, you should somehow squeeze in the time for learning and practice within this five month window. It is very much possible. It is definitely doable. You can definitely crack CAT with four or five months of preparation, but you've got to squeeze more into this four months or five months. Right? So how much time should I allot for catch taking mock exams? About 100 hours. Taking an exam takes three hours. Reviewing it takes three hours. If you, if you have to do justice to this exam, you should take at least 12 to 14 mock cats. So that's the timeline you're looking for. You've got to be able to throw in three hours plus three hours for 12 to 15 mock cats, definitely, to stay on top of your game because you need to be very intense in the exam. It's a very tiring exam. So your body has to get geared to spending three hours at full intensity. That's very vital. Right? So don't cut corners on this. Beyond this, what do we have? The CAT testing window is usually in November. The results are out usually in, in December. Right? And, and then this time window from Jan to May, this goes off in interviews and group discussions uh, and, and essay writing. And you get a call letter from about January onward. The interview proper process goes on from Feb, March, April. You'll get results in May and you'll be joining college in June. So that's the timeline. Exam happens in December. Uh, sorry, results happen in December. Jan, you start getting call letters. Feb, March, April for interviews and group discussions and essay writing. May will be results. June is when the college begins. And so this is the timeline, and this is broadly the kind of the contours of how you should plan your preparation. So a, a couple of things that errors that we see students making very often. They start early and then they lose momentum. That can't happen. If you're starting as early as October, that's great, that's brilliant. You're giving yourself a buffer, 
but that does not mean just go full tilt for three months and then lose steam by January and then do nothing till June. There's, there's no advantage in starting early if you lose steam. So don't do that. Second thing that I've noticed uh, that is very common is there is a slightly uh, stepbrotherly attitude towards these mock cats. Right? People like preparing, they like doing one component at a time and then say suddenly wake up and say, look, I'm going to crack this exam. And then go bang, 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 topic wise. But totally push this mock cat taking thing two, two weeks before the exam. That is very silly. Like the last week before the exam, you should just take rest. So very often pushing out this mock cat to, to, to the last week or last 10 days is, is, is extremely counterproductive. So don't do this. So make sure that you, you, you do component by component, but at some point of time you switch back and say, look, I'm going to take the full exam and see where all the moving parts fit in. And then define your preparation from there on. Rejig it to know where you stand, how you plan, all of that. That component is very vital. 